Welcome to our communion service on this Sunday after Ascension. You can see that this time we're outside in the rectory garden and Nigel joins me to celebrate as I invite you to celebrate with me and make your own spiritual communion later on. And so we begin with a wonderful acclamation for this season of Ascension Tide. We say still in the season of Easter, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And from Psalm 45, God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the trumpet. Amen. And to begin our song worship, we have our first hymn, Jesus shall reign where'er the sun. And so we come to say sorry to God and in quiet before him, we remember that Christ has gone up on high. He sits at God's right hand and prays for us to God the Father. As we prepare for ourselves to meet him here in the courts of heaven, let's call to mind our many failures and sins. And in a moment of quiet, you might like to recollect those things those things that you know are troubling your conscience. We're all made in the image of God and often our conscience does trouble us. But as Christians, we can give these things to God our Father as he holds out his hand of forgiveness. And so we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
our collect or special prayer for this Sunday. Risen, ascended Lord, as we rejoice in your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. What an appropriate collect or special prayer at this time of lockdown, as we think about easing lockdown as well. We're now going to hear our reading from Acts chapter 1 of Jesus' Ascension from Christine, and then Bruce will be speaking to us. Jesus is ascended. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is near. What larger picture can we take from Ascension in these days? The reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who, you, who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for that reading, the story of, of Ascension Day, great. And we're gonna look at that in a moment, and let's pray before we do. Lord God, we thank you for your word to us and we ask that you would speak to us and reveal to each one of us what it is that you want us to hear from you, that we can be changed and live for you. Amen. We've done a couple of quizzes this week, at least we will have done by the time you get to watch this. I doubt very much that we won last night's quiz, but thank you to all involved. Quizzes, of course, are all about questions and then the answers. And as a school teacher, I used to get asked lots of questions, some good, some less good. Um, some of you will know that Jackie and I used to teach at the same school and on one occasion a little boy came up to me at break time and he said, um, you know that Mrs Watson in science? And I said yes, he said, um, are you going out with her or something? Which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so I thought and I just said it, it's the or something and he walked away. So this passage contains quite a number of questions and perhaps not the answers people were looking for. Let's have a look. Starting in verse 6, it says this. So when the apostles met together, they asked the Lord, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? An interesting question, maybe a fair question, but actually pops perhaps not quite the right question because that word restore suggests they were looking for a political state. They weren't going to get one of those. Israel, well, a place. And I think Jesus was talking more probably about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And they said at this time, looking at now. And I think there was a bit more going on than that. Let's have a little look at these three things. So if we're talking about a place, we need a map. Now the kingdom of heaven, you won't find it on any map. And I think they've mistaken the kingdom of Israel for the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. A spiritual rather than a physical kingdom. There will be a king, King Jesus, who's about to go and reign at the side of his father in heaven. 
So we have got a king, but his rule will be lived out through ordinary people like you and me. And in verse 8, it says that, that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So we will receive this power. We will reign with Jesus, not, not, not as king. He is the king, but actually his power will be bestowed on us so that we can help establish his kingdom here on earth. What about Israel? Well, Jerusalem may well be the starting point for this new kingdom, but actually this kingdom won't be limited by borders or boundaries. The answer that they get makes it clear that the kingdom needs to go to the ends of the earth. It's going to be for all people and for all nations. What about this business of at this time? Greek, I know loads of Greek, no I don't. Uh, Greek has two words for time. Chronos. Now that came up in Thursday's Jay's pub quiz, actually. I got that one right. Chronos. Time on a watch. We get an English word like chronology. It helps us put time into a sequence about when things happened. And there's another word, kairos, which is like an event in history, an event in time, uh, an opportunity that can lead to change, good or bad, a birth, a death, a marriage coronavirus. All these things are kairos moments when we might learn something uh, good or bad. So I wonder if at this kairos that we're at now, um, as we face coronavirus lockdown, if God isn't presenting us with a kairos moment, an opportunity to listen to him afresh, to ask what really matters to him. What does he want from us now? What would he like to see changed? For the apostles, there seems to have been the assumption about what was going to happen. And in answer to their question, they began to see that maybe they weren't going to get the kind of response that they were expecting. It was going to change. And this is a time as we move from Ascension now to Pentecost next week for us to pray and to listen. That's what we're doing with our morning prayer at the moment if you, if you uh, see that online. We see in verse 14 that this is what the apostles did and the others who met with them, that they were constantly in prayer. Lord God, what is it that you want from us next? That leads us into the second question in the text, which comes in verse 11. These two angels seem to be saying to them, why are you standing there looking into the sky? What are you waiting for? What are you looking for? We kind of know why they're looking there up into the sky, don't we? They've just seen Jesus ascend into heaven. A few of us might even stop talking for a moment if we saw something like that happen. Incredible. And no wonder they're just gazing, watching, waiting, wondering what is going on. So there's a tension between earth and heaven that Jesus has gone up. He's risen. He's, he's risen up into heaven. And we have been, in a sense, like the apostles, left here alone. Are we stargazers or are we witnesses to what we've seen and experienced? Let's pray for the next week and a half. Prayer which informs us, prayer that's informed by this commission that comes, that you will be my witnesses. Asking God, what does that mean for us, for each one of us, for a church in Kings North, in Ashford? And what does it mean for the kingdom of God? As we pray for Christ's return, which we are also told about. So let's pray and invite God to speak to us and show us actually what it is that this commission that we have also received to be his witnesses from where we are to the ends of the earth. I came across a Hebrew word this week. Hineni, I think it's pronounced. It means here I am. It's what Abraham said to God. It's what Moses said to God. And it's what Samuel said to God. All of them invite God to speak to them. Here I am, Lord. What do you want from me? That's a very difficult thing to say and a difficult prayer to pray. But I think it's what God is calling us to do now, to say, here I am, Lord, speak to me 
and show me what it is that you're asking from me. Let's pray. Lord God, we invite you, Jesus, to speak to us in these unusual times. And as we ask questions, perhaps good, bad, limited by our own understanding, we ask that you would reveal more of your kingdom to us. Lord God, what is it that you want from us? And as you speak to us, may we be able to say, Hineni, Lord, here I am. Amen. Thank you for listening. We're going to sing again now. Nikki is going to lead us in our next song. Where we fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. We bow before him because he is our God. Normally we'd be taking our offering. Um, if you'd like to do that, there's some information on the news sheet about how you may do that. If you need to know how to access the news sheet, go to our Facebook page or email me or Caroline and we'll make sure that gets to you. Thank you.
And so after our worship there, we now come to declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let's declare that faith in the, in, in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and his ascension. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now a member of our congregation will share something of their story of faith during lockdown. How has my faith in Jesus Christ helped me through this period of lockdown? Like a lot of people, I have suffered periods of anxiety through this period of time. However, I have been able to use my faith in a positive way. I have found engaging in morning prayer three times a week has not only re-energised my faith, but has also allowed me to further develop my faith in different ways. In times when I have felt very anxious, I have reminded myself of the words, take it to the Lord in prayer. On several occasions, I have read the poem Footprints. One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never ever during your trials and testings. When you saw one set of footprints, it was then I carried you. The last verse speaks volumes to me. My faith has definitely helped me through what has been a very trying time. Feeling supported by my church family through online morning prayer, online meetings, Bible studies and written communications has definitely helped my mental, physical and spiritual health. God has been talking to me to use my faith to support and encourage others and that it's safe to do so and provide me the opportunity to develop my faith in different ways that I never thought possible. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have not left us as orphans, but sent your Holy Spirit to comfort us and empower us in our witness to the world. We pray that as we live towards the day of Pentecost, your Spirit will give us power to speak the gospel with boldness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your persecuted church comfort the suffering protect those in danger fill them with love and boldness may their witness bring many to faith in the lord jesus we pray for those who preach in the gospel in places where it is yet unknown bless the work of mission and fill your servants with power lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our world in turmoil 
We especially pray your mercy on those nations now facing surges in corona infections. We think of Brazil, Russia, India and Mexico and all of those nations where poverty makes this crisis even worse. We pray their leaders will seek truth and take care of the vulnerable. We pray for international cooperation, sharing of resources and for your church to stand as a beacon of light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and thank, you, and thank you that the situation has improved in the past few weeks. We continue to pray for the most vulnerable among us and particularly want to ask for your protection for the residents and staff at Parkview, our local nursing home. We pray for NHS staff and those in our midst, midst who are in the medical front lines. We thank you for all those who have shown love to others, sacrificed their comfort and freedom and have been faithfully serving their communities in this time. We pray for our na nation's leaders in their difficult decisions they have to make. May they be guided by wisdom, wisdom, truth and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and our schools. So much wisdom and planning is needed to reopen the schools in a safe way. We pray you will give all those involved in education creativity, strength, insight and flexibility. We pray you will bless and protect our young people, both those who are going back to school soon and those who will remain at home for the time being. We pray you will bless and strengthen all those involved in safeguarding and child protection, that they may help those most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish and our church, for those who are struggling with lockdown measures, for those who are lonely or who are facing financial uncertainty, for the children and young people who miss out on so many things they would normally be involved in, for those that are vulnerable and have to shield. Thank you for your presence with all of us. Thank you for all the ways we can connect, even as we miss gathering. We pray for our leaders and particularly for Caroline, Bruce the lead and the leadership team. Give them vision, wisdom and joy as they serve us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those among us who need our prayers as they battle illness or mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray for the families and friends of Julia, Roy, Joyce and Hannah's grandfather. We also pray for your comfort and healing for Richard Bellamy, Pam, Rosemary and Tracy's father John. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we prepare for Pentecost, we pray that your kingdom come in us, among us and through us. Gracious Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to share the peace with one another. The fruit of the peace, sorry, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy and peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. We take that time to share peace with one another. And I know it's online, but through the airwaves, as it were, if you are living on your own. The peace of the Lord indeed be with you wherever you are. We now come to the liturgy of our communion. And remember, it is only representational of the communion we'd have in church. You will be able, as I said earlier, to make your own spiritual communion as Nigel and I share the bread and the wine together later on. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, we believe you and all we have heard is true. When you break bread, may we recognise you as the fire that burns within us, that we may bring light to your world. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And now we give you thanks that after he had ascended far above all heavens 
and was seated at the right hand of your majesty, he sent forth upon the universal church your holy and life-giving spirit, that through his glorious power the joy of the everlasting gospel might go forth into all the world. Lord of life, you created the universe where all living things reflect your glory. You give us this great and beautiful earth to discover and to cherish. You give us your love even when things go wrong. Jesus knew hurt and pain. Through him you wipe away our tears and fill us with your peace. On the night before he died, when darkness had fallen, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After they had eaten, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and shared it with his disciples, saying, This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. So, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate his love, his death, his risen life. As you feed us with these gifts, send your Holy Spirit and change us more and more to be like Jesus, our Saviour. Help us, Father, to love one another as we look forward to that day when suffering is ended and all creation is gathered in your loving arms. And now with all your saints we give you glory through Jesus Christ in the strength of the Spirit, today and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. And so I hope you've been able to pray that prayer that was just on the screen. Let's say together, Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you, wherever you are, with new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Notices today. Well, do join us um, afterwards uh, if you're watching this on Sunday morning. It will be released live at 10 o'clock. Do feel free to put a live feed comment in if you wish. And uh, yes, our, our coffee will be at uh, uh, Coffee by Zoom at half past 11. Morning prayer this week will look slightly different as we celebrate the nine days of prayer leading up to Pentecost. Uh, there are, is material available Church people, you've got our news sheet. If you want any material, you can find it there or ask me if you want to download or have any booklets for the Novena or Nine Days of Prayer.
But look out for things too on social media around Thy Kingdom Come and the Novena. We will have celebrated, I hope, a great church quiz last night at seven o'clock. And uh, maybe that's the start of more quizzes and different other ways of staying connected. But families watching this, we now um, have a more of an offering on Fridays and Mondays for your children, either at primary or at secondary level. Again, look on Facebook and you'll be able to see from Bruce what we are offering. And so let us go into another week of lockdown in the peace and love of the ascended Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our final hymn that we're closing with, what else can we have but crown him with many crowns? <laughs>